Hello and welcome back to the channel, Holopon Solo Sagas. Today we'll be playing a game that was the winner of a poll on the next game. The runner-up was Twilight 2000. Uh, it was requested and we will start playing it. And that game is... Alien. So, thank you for returning. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much indeed. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscription and subscribe. Uh, as I said, this is gonna be uh, Alien. This is the first time we've done Alien. It's our members uh, that voted for this to, to be played. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll be able to see each of the episodes when they come up. So, one of the things that the members also asked for was, uh, so uh, what we'll be using is the solo rules released by the parts per million people. Uh, this was one of their Patreon releases. Now, there's, we'll be playing in, with uh, two different types of ways that the Alien role-playing game by Free League. Uh, they didn't send me this for free. Uh, I paid for this in the Alien Day uh, special sale. But there's two ways to play, which is cinematic play, which is more like a film, so beginning, end, short run kind of convention play. Or there's campaign play. I'm going to be using campaign play, uh, so with a longer run, Less aliens always in every single uh, episode and more different diversity. So a bit of corporate espionage and stuff like that. There's a, a novel that I was reading whilst I was away. I still haven't finished it called Cold Forge. Uh, so that then gives you more of a sort of corporate espionage, scientific research sort of setting. But one of the things that the uh, members asked, it was P.O. Uh, he asked, uh, could it be uh, space truckers? So there are three ways to do campaign play. There's space truck, well, in, in the core, uh, space truckers, colonization, and uh, colonial marines. So we'll be doing space truckers. Uh, I was reading through various things and I had some ideas and I think I'm gonna base this, the characters for the, our crew, uh, space truckers uh, around another crew that uh, you might start to uh, recognize, we should definitely recognize when we say what the name of the ship is. Uh, so based on the parts per million rules and the uh, stuff from the book we have for campaign play it's suggested that you start with a session zero and our uh, the prologue information for the uh, solo guide also sort of has the same similar sort of thing which is uh, you start to generate your key character and then you build the rest of the crew and various other things around the actual job for the campaign play now in campaign play uh, within the main rule book, it says having a session zero uh, to begin to set up some things with uh, to what our expectations will be. Now, what I'm thinking is, uh, so we'll run through these and then we'll find out. So how did we meet? So we all work together. So the team is gonna work together. Uh, we're all employed by the, we're all uh, with the same employee. So we're not like best of mates or anything, but some of the, the individuals within uh, the crew Maybe okay, we're gonna start off with a ship uh, and because we're space truckers, uh, we might be hauling uh, a mining sort of vessel or we might be hauling cargo, we don't know yet. We'll use the random roles within the mission generation section of the core rule book to work that out, but we work together. Uh, who are your buddies, who are your rivals? Well, we'll do that when we roll the characters. Uh, what do you do and why do you do it? Again, that's character bases. Do you have a spaceship? Yes, they will. So we are gonna have a ship. We will use the sh same ship uh, as is actually in the uh, Aliens film, uh, which I started watching. Uh, that is a model CM88H Bison, which uh, the infamous USCSS Nostramos. So this is going to be called the USCSS red dwarf uh, which is a deep space mining vessel so that's the ship now the the uh the bison class the h class for the bison can normally have a crew of seven uh which is relevant uh, as we start to work out uh, other pieces of information now the crew of seven i'm i don't think so having seven characters in solo play is a lot so even though this ship has a crew of seven, we might just do, so we've done various other games like Titan 2000 and other things. So three works quite well. 
uh, but we might extend this to a possible four crew. Uh, I don't know where I got that four from. Uh, and so with our crew, we will definitely have uh, one person. So we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll go through uh, to the next bit. I will do this now. So if we're gonna do it as campaign play, uh, then what we need to do is we need to use the campaign frameworks. Now, as I said, there's the three frameworks, space truckers, colonial marines, and frontier colonists. Uh, space truckers is the one we're gonna choose. So we have the uh, our bison class, uh, well, our H class bison, a USCSS Red Dwarf, normally has a crew of seven. Now the typical uh, jobs are more cargo run type jobs, which we'll get from uh, rolling the, the uh, scenario, which we will do in a minute, but first we wanna go through do our crew. Uh, we have suggested employers, now we could be sort of freelancing and moving through, but Wayland uh, Utani is one potential uh, supplier. I've ordered uh, a Wayland Utani t-shirt, so it's, I'm wearing my Serenity because it's space. Uh, and they're also got like a, a moving craft sort of thing. Uh, there's a couple of other employees, but we'll probably be, uh, for this, this job, we're being employed by Wayland, or Wayland Utani, as they now are, as the Wayland Corporation uh, was taken over. Now, here's the key part. So we've got, uh, they've got a suggested ship, which is a commercial freighter, but we're gonna use the H-Class because it's a towing vessel. So the H-Class is a designated towing class, uh, whereas the one it suggests, which is the G-Class, which is a freighter, which is a carrying freighter. So we can have crew-wise, uh, company agent, medic, officer, pilot, and roughneck. So roughneck is more like an engineer, uh, pilot is pilot, officer is the, that's an officer, so the captain. Uh, we've got a medic who would be a science medic officer and company agent could be somebody who's just, is working for the company and is coming along for the ride. I'm thinking out of our four crew, so I think we can have functionally four uh, NPCs that we will generate today. Uh, and then potentially we can say that there's another three, which is in cryo, in cold storage, for whatever happens within our story, which I have no idea, and we will roll up after we finish doing characters uh, to see what we've, we've done for session one. So uh, we're definitely gonna have a roughneck who will be sort of our main character, uh, and, and uh, their name is going to be Lister, who we'll generate in a minute. Uh, we can have a medic, uh, and the medic would possibly be a medic science officer, and that will be a, uh, an android, a simulant, uh, whose name is Crichton. Uh, now, we do need some sort of pilot or officer type, uh, possibly not an officer, possibly a navigation officer uh, or a pilot, or maybe they sort of have told people they've done their navigation uh, qualifications, but I've, I'm not too sure whether to make them a pilot or a navigation officer, so why don't we roll this D6, and if it's one to three, they're an officer, and four, five, six, they're a pilot. Three, they're an officer. So, they're a low-class officer. Uh, they would be called Rimmer, Arnold J. A. J. Rimmer. Uh, Lister would be, ooh, Dave Lister. And Crichton is just Crichton. Now, our fourth character, that, that is the one I'm thinking about, the four character. Now this one is a little bit uh, unsure because this person would be more stylish uh, and a sort of feline in behavior. Uh, we could have a ship's cat who is cat. Uh, and I thought of that because I started watching the beginnings of the Aliens film and I saw uh, Jonesy. Uh, uh, well done, uh, P.O. for getting Jonesy. Uh, and uh, that was for, the, the there was a a uh, competition for getting the digital versions of the Alien games. Because uh, I got it with this physical version and I don't need it if I got the physical version. Uh, so, so I gave it away. Uh, I'm thinking we might use company agent. Uh, they're a bit of a pushover company agent uh, and uh, possibly, uh, although in the original, uh, that they are all of the same. Uh, we could have, maybe we'll call this person Cat, so like the shortened version of Catherine, 
and that is the company agent. And then we can have, there are three others that we don't know who they are uh, or what skill sets they've got, that if we need someone, if something goes wrong, someone dies, we need someone, they are gonna be in cryo sleep and we can you know, hatch them out and then roll them up as we need them. So we know what our characters are. Now one of the guidelines that it says within the parts per million rules is that though most NPCs for Alien are not fully developed, there's some short cut down rules within the core book how to do NPCs just with short uh, stat blocks. Uh, your crew should be fully developed people. So before we move on and roll our job generator with some keywords to work out uh, what the job is, we will go through the character creation process, which based on the fact that it's free league does not take an awfully long time, uh, to create our characters for this. Their character sheets are quite quite cool. They're, they're, they run this way, whereas most character sheets would run that way. So uh, we'll start with Dave Lister. Dave Lister is a roughneck. Appearance is slob is normally the term that is used to describe Dave Lister. Uh, what do we do? We need to choose our career, spend points on our attributes. So we'll choose our career, which we have done. Uh, roughneck. Uh, key attribute for Roughneck says here is strength. Key skills, heavy machinery, stamina, close combat. Career talents, resilient, long haul, true grit. We'll look those up in a second and I'll tell you what they are. So. Spend points on your attributes. Uh, okay, we've got 14 points for attributes. Uh, nothing can be less than two. Nothing can be more than four apart from our key attribute, which is strength. It's the standard thing. Uh, we've got four attributes, strength, wits, empathy, and agility. Uh, and then we have three skills based off of each of those. It's pretty much like that in most free league games. Uh, this is the mutant year zero base rules uh, that gets slightly tweaked for based on all different settings. Uh, so we need two in each. Now we do know, so uh, Dave Lister is a bit empathetical. So we're gonna give three in empathy. Uh, I think wits, he, he's quite high in wits. So we're gonna put a four in wits. Uh, so what's that, Ali? That leaves us with seven. Uh, we will say, maybe give him a three for agility and a four for strength. So, so that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's only 14. How much did you say, 14? Yes, 14. Oh uh, yeah, cool, seven and seven. Oh dear me, basic maths. So strength of four, wits of four, empathy of three, agility of three. Then we have skills. Uh, what I got wrong for The Walking Dead, uh, and, but I don't think I got it wrong in Twilight 2000, uh, and just to remind myself and remind all of you, in free league games, I'm pretty sure it's all of them. I haven't read uh, uh, Blade Runner yet. I am attempting to source uh, the Blade Runner core and box set. If, if anyone can help me with that, that would be awesome, because I've kick-started uh, the uh, Replicant uh, rebellion so as we should get the solo rules and I will be playing uh, Blade Runner using the solo rules once they're kicked out uh, but I need the core set to do that I haven't read that so I don't know if it's the same but uh, obviously I'm not not forgotten uh, if you have zero points in the skill you can still roll an attempt on that skill uh, you just roll zero for the skill uh, and then it's just the base stat that's underneath it so we have 10 points to distribute between all of our skills. We can assign up to three points to each of the skills uh, list, uh, listed for our career. And we can have a single point in any other skill we choose. So for a roughneck, their skills are heavy machinery, stamina and close combat. So we can have up to three points in each one of those skills and then one up to one point in any other skill. So heavy machinery is when attempting to repair, jury rig or break any kind of machinery. So we're gonna put, so what did we say? We said we had 10 points to work with. 
Heavy machinery, we will stick three in for repairing, which gives us a seven. Uh, close combat, I'm guessing is close combat. Let's stick a two in there, giving us a remainder of five. Stamina is for general survival. Let's stick another two in there, giving us three. That means we have three remaining. Let's give him a one in manipulation uh, because he can talk his way out of problems. That gives us two remaining. I uh, don't think he has have what I have. Don't think Dave Lister has command, though he is quite commanding. Survival, comtech maybe. Observation, let's stick one in observation. That might be useful, depending on what, what comes up. And then we've got one more point that we can stick somewhere. Don't think range combat is gonna be useful. Piloting, maybe mobility. Uh, that, that's like stealth and dodging. Let's give him one, one point in mobility. Uh, so we've got three in heavy machinery, so three repairs, two for close combat, two for stamina, one for observation, one for manipulation, and one for mobility. Uh, next we have talents. So roughneck talents are resilient. Only the hardest folks survive out here. Roll for strength. Anytime you suffer damage, uh, you can't push this roll, which does not count as an action for every hit. One point of damage is eliminated. If all damage is eliminated, you suffer none at all. Long haul, nothing surprises you anymore. Once per act in cinematic play or once per game session in campaign play, you may ignore all of the uh, error things from a single roll. That could be useful. Uh, true grit, you can push any, any roll based on strength twice, not just once, because otherwise you're only allowed to push once. Let me think. What talent? I, I like all three of those. Long haul would be quite useful, so as we don't panic. Though avoiding damage, well, let's... So we don't actually know that we're going into combat in any of this. Uh, that might not happen. So either re-rolling or ignoring stuff for panicking is more useful to me. Now, if, this, if, if Lister is mainly doing the repair type things, I think True Grit... Pushing uh, strength rolls twice might be useful for Dave. Uh, so we've got talents, that's our talent done. Uh, stress is our stress levels, which is like health and stress. Then we've got health. Name we've done, appearance slob, personal agenda, campaign play. What do we got for personal agenda? It might help us do stuff. Personal agenda, your compulsive thrill seekers. No, uh, you once sacrificed your family for the job, now you. Uh, you won't let your friends down ever, maybe. Uh, downtime matters. If you can grab a can of beer and some time alone, you're happy. I'm going to say uh, personal agenda, which is... Uh, so Dave found himself on board the Red Dwarf uh, via a series of unfortunate circumstances. Uh, so he won't let his friends down. Buddies and rivals, uh, we're going to say uh, his buddy is Cat and his rival is Rimmer. Uh, then we have potential, a piece of gear. So it's got a piece of gear that's important to them. Where have we got, where's this? Here, gear. Oh no, this is, oh, signature item. This is signature item first, and then we're gonna do gear afterwards. Signature item, choose one of the following or come up with your own. I think uh, signature item here we are. He's going to have to be a Les Paul copy guitar. Uh, and then choose two of the starting items below. He's going to have an IRC Mark 50 compression suit. I don't know what one of those is, but we will find out. And a flashlight. And then, not, not that I think it matters, but he's going to have a D6, 200 credits. Just right here. I can't see where it goes and 200 credits, and I think that is Dave Lister. So Dave Lister, being a roughneck, is uh, an engineer. He's one of the engineers on the ship. Uh, well, next we will do uh, the officer. No, we'll do the medic, who is an android, because that's quite interesting. And then I might just do uh, Rimmer and uh, Cat as the officer and company agent off screen. So next we have Crichton. Now, everyone knows that Crichton is a simulant. 
So starting uh, abilities, androids or synthetics have a plus three bonus to two attributes of their choice after the 14 points have been spent. Can reach a maximum of eight in the key attribute and seven in other attributes. And we have uh, medic. So key attribute is empathy. So we said that there was 14 points. So we will have five in empathy, four in strength, which gives us nine. So that gives us five remaining. We will have three in wits, two in agility. And then we will spend, you can add a plus three bonus to two attributes of their choice. So we are gonna make uh, empathy an eight and then we will make agility a five and next we've got skills i don't think synthetics have any advantage over skills so it's just the 10 points uh, we have our medic we've got mobility observation and medical skills uh, mobility observation and medical aid so we've got 10 points that can be spread between them three points to each skill listed for your career so we'll make uh, Crichton quite observant with a three the mobility is low with a one and their medical aid is a three that gives us seven which leaves us three points remaining we will say that one for piloting, one for Comtech, let's give him one for survival. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Uh, talent for medics, calming presence. People find them relaxed whenever you're around. Once per turn, you may reduce the stress level of another character within short range by one. You have to be relative to compassion. I uh, don't think compassion. You can push any skill roll for empathy twice, not just once. Each push increases your skill level by your stress level rather by one. Field surgeon, you know the delicate art of stopping a wound from bleeding. So field surgeon might be useful, but we don't know whether we're going to get into combat. Compassion means that uh, Crichton can re-roll empathy skills. Let's do compassion, re-rolling empathy skills. Uh, next, so that was our talent. Uh, personal agenda, addicted to a strong painkiller, no. Sworn on life, an oath never to take a life, which is also a synthetic thing. Okay, so Crichton has sworn never to take a life, which includes any other sort of life forms. Uh, then we'll have signature item, uh, medical certificate, framed, a gear, a med kit, and we could do, I don't know what NAPRO leave is, but we're gonna have five doses of N-A-P-R-O-L-E-V-E, -E, which we'll look up later. Is that it? Oh, credits. Uh, no, it isn't got, oh yeah, we'll give him credits. 100 credits. Uh, and then we've got appearance, our oh, career medic. Appearance, calm, gentle voice. All right, I will do, uh, I will do Rimmer and Cat off screen and then we'll come back and we'll roll the first mission. Okay, so uh, I created both Rimmer and Cat. Uh, Rimmer being a navigation officer uh, Rimmer has a strength of four, uh, wits of three, empathy of three, eligibility of four, has comtech of one, manipulation of three, command of three, piloting one, range combat two. Uh, Rimmer has a personal agenda of wanting to gain a promotion or an award, has a buddy of cat and arrival of Lister, has a service pistol and an E-series watch and has signature item of a letter of accommodation. Uh, Rimmer comes from money because Rimmer has 1,200 credits and Rimmer has pull rank, which is they can use their command skill to give orders to other characters and they must follow those orders. 
uh, it's a command skill versus manipulation, so basically they can pull rank. Uh, otherwise, the other thing I considered was the empathy reroll, but Crichton the medic already has an empathy uh, base uh, with empathy reroll, and I thought using the command was a bit more useful. And Cat is a company agent. Oh, uh, Rimmer's uh, appearance is crew cut out with a spotless uniform. Uh, we had, and I th don't think I did beforehand, what Crichton's uh, buddy and rival was, uh, and I may not have done their agenda. So the agenda was, oh no, I did do the agenda, swearing that I've never to take a life. Uh, relationship buddy uh, is Lister, and rival is Rimmer. So then we have Cat, who is a company agent. Uh, appearance is an elaborate hair with a disarming smile. Personal agenda wants power. Uh, will never miss a chance uh, to get ahead. Uh, buddy is Rimmer, uh, officer, take advantage of that. Uh, rival, I thought was Crichton, because I'm gonna say that Cat doesn't like synthetics. Uh, we will have Cat has a wits of five, an empathy of four, an agility of three, and a strength of two. Has the skill of observation of three, survival at one, comtech of three, manipulation of two, mobility of one. Uh, has the talent of cunning, which means can push wits rolls twice. Uh, their signature item is uh, their corporate authorization, uh, which uh, is so a card or a certificate of authorization. They also have their gear is a data card, which has their clearance level attached to it. And they have a vintage Ro uh, Rolex watch and they have 700 credits. So, uh, Though it's a company uh, agent uh, that will be low level and for some reason has been assigned on board, the assigned to the Red Dwarf. So what we do next is the suggestion from uh, the solo guide. Uh, this that took me hours and I had a telephone call uh, from my eldest child during that. So, so this is ages later. Uh, so the suggestion next is that we go to the job generator on page 341 and we decide to roll up a job. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rolling a job based on the Space Truckers uh, campaign and we will roll that job and then we'll make three to five uh, D66 rolls and we'll look up parts of the job description. Oh, ahead of time. Do not roll for the complication of the plot twist. All right. So. We will roll for the job. Do not roll for the complication or plot twist yet. So what do we have? 34. Normal nearby mission. So it's a normal mission with a nearby system. Complication one, uh, base reward is 30 plus 3d6 reward uh, with no extra rewards. The employer is 21, the Colonial Administration. So the Colonial Administration has employed the crew of the Red Dwarf to do something, all right? Uh, the reward, 24, uh, is money. Now, where is the destination? Are we told where the destination is? Uh, 15. Hostile forest, jungle, desert. Learning site is planet side wilderness, far from human habitation or on an uninhabited world. So we're being asked to transport something to, uh, so roll of 15, hostile, Forest, hostile environment, planet side. This ship can land, uninhabited. All right, what are we asking? What are they asking us to transport? And so it says, do not roll for the complication or plot twist yet. Uh, this is all rolling low. I'm gonna get rid of that one and roll something else because it's always rolling low the whole time. Uh, 22, so water, ice or something rare. So we don't know why, we don't know what the plot twist is, we don't know what the complication is, we don't know why our agent, why the company agent who organises these jobs for us has coming on board with us. So don't roll plot twist or complication yet. Okay, 
what else do we have on this? Okay, so we've been given this mission. We've been given, so we've been uh, employed. So let's do, let's do this, find out how much. Uh, six, not 10, 300, 300,000. So we're being paid 300,000 split between the crew to transport some water, some frozen rare water or rare ice to a hostile environment. We'll roll some uh, keywords to find out what this is on a, an uninhabited planet somewhere uh, in a nearby system. So we will start, uh, the next session we will start by describing the base where, because it suggests that you have a base, which we will use the base that, that comes with the core rule book. And next session we will start on that base, uh, beginning to go into hypersleep, hypersleep to transfer and do follow the, the guide, which is uh, works in using three acts, act one, act two, act three, and you progress through developing more and more complications as you go through until we come to the conclusion. Uh, and then we'll find out what's going on on the planet when we get there. So we have our team, our crew of four. We know that there's going to be three others on board, but they are either already in cryo sleep or we won't need to bring them out of cryo sleep. We'll only bring them out of cryo sleep if one of these four uh, dies or we hit a complication and we need some other type of skill sets. We won't bother generating seven and then keeping three in uh, cryosleep for this time, but for future missions and future things, if we bring someone out of cryosleep, they will then be uh, within constant and we'll do, well basically what we'll do is we'll treat, treat, <laughs> we'll treat it like uh, uh, we need a rotating cast or like a computer game where you can have people and you swap them in and out, but we will try not to have the cast be bigger then four at any point in time, and we might move people in and out of main cast uh, as we go. Uh, but I think that will work for this mission. So we would have our medic just in case, or science officer in case something goes wrong. We have our company agent who has secured this job and he's gonna make sure that we get the transfer papers done properly on the other end. We have our navigation officer to make sure we get there and doing piloting. And then we have uh, our engineer, Dave, uh, to fix anything which goes wrong. We have a couple of people with piloting skill. Uh, we've got people with Comtech skill and we've got some engineering type people or we've got one engineer to fix something if something goes wrong. That should be all right. So nothing like this hits suggests at this point that we need any form of combat skills. We're just doing a simple mission and we'll work out what happens as we go. And that is that for our instigation of uh, the alien role-playing game in campaign mode. Uh, we might try it in cinematic mode some other time, but this time just campaign mode. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you aren't a subscriber, please could you subscribe. It's been much appreciated. Thank you to our members. And I will see you next time where we will progress the alien game further and find out what happens to our crew and where they start and where they will be heading to uh, in the expanses of space where no one can hear you scream. See ya.